Boot Camp. Today, Tim Tam and I want to talk to you about our environment. Isn't that right, Tim Tam? We want to talk to you about keeping it clean, understanding our environment so that we can enjoy and live happy, productive lives. So what we're going to talk about today are packages, sessions, workspace, and working directory. So here is our computer. We have the hard drive and we have RAM. We went to the internet and downloaded R from CRAN, so it sits on our hard drive. We probably also downloaded some packages that we're interested in trying. That's how programmers around the world extend and contribute to the R project. Packages are basically just groups of functions that people write to perform a specific purpose or a group of purposes, and they're stored together in, in, in your directory on your hard drive. We also probably have some data files that we've saved and maybe even some scripts that we've written. So what happens? Well, when you start up R, R operates in RAM, and so it opens up, it, it starts to occupy some space in your computer's active memory. So that's when your session starts. A session is a single bout of using the R language. It's basically the, everything that you do, type and otherwise, between starting up R and shutting it down. You probably are gonna ins uh, load up some packages and you can use the require or the library function it's important to note for new users, this might be a little confusing, but not all packages are loaded every time you fire R up. It waits for you to tell it what you want it to load. You have to actually load them yourself with every new session. So you might source your script file, which means to read in your script file into the memory into RAM so that your functions are available for you to use. And you might read in your data using read.csv. So now you have all of these objects in your workspace. So the workspace is just that. It's just the collection of everything that you have currently in your RAM. If you want to know what's in your workspace, you can use the list command ls parentheses to display all the objects in your workspace. And you can use um, rm remove to remove uh, specific objects from your workspace. Or you can list all of them and it'll remove everything. Okay, but if you really want to make sure everything is clean, you probably are best off shutting r down and not saving any of your objects. That's really the only way to know that you've gotten rid of everything and all the packages that you've loaded. Okay. So here you go, happily programming away, click, 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 and making many, 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 many objects. Now you have a lot more stuff in your workspace. So you might think this is fantastic, right? But what happens when you have a Shazam power outage? Well, there you go, you've lost everything. <laughs> okay, so what do you do uh, to safeguard against this? Well, if you go back, to when you have a lot of work completed, or even way before that, what you should do is take every little bit of code that works and start a text file and copying and pasting your lines of code that worked into a script. And then you wanna save that script file on your hard drive in your R class directory or someplace where you're doing your R work, okay? So you wanna make a script file and name it with a, sp a name that ends in .r. So at the end of the session, when you're done for the day and you're ready to kick back and leave your computer behind, R will ask you, do you want to save your workspace image? If you say yes, what will happen is all of your data objects will get sucked into this hidden file called dot r data. It's a, a binary file that uh, stores all of those objects. When you quit, everything that you typed in, click, 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 
is automatically saved into a dot history file. Now, dot r data and dot history are files in the current directory, but they're hidden. So files that start with a dot or a period are usually hidden, and uh, you have to do a little bit of extra work in order to see them, but they're still there. And so what happens the next time that you start up R in the same directory, you're going to automatically reload those files. Now that may or may not be a behavior that you want. Personally, I don't like it because you probably made a lot of objects. Some of them were probably mistakes. And six months later, when you go back to it, you might have completely forgotten. OK, so what I like to do instead is just say no. And instead, use the save function or the, and, um, the save function to save my objects so that I take the specific objects I want and save it into a file that I named that I can find again. And then I use the save history function to actually save my history into a file whose name that I know, <laughs> okay? Um, so I normally don't save a lot of objects. I only do this when the analysis uh, took a lot of computer time. And so you might want to save some intermediate data processing files. But you, what you must, must, must do is work on writing clean scripts. So work on building a clean script with comments so that anytime you open up that script, you'll understand what you did and why. Okay, so the next time you fire up R, what you can do is just start your script. And your script will now load your packages, load all of your personal functions, load your data, and generate output. You can actually generate output to files. So save your um, model output or whatever into a CSV file, and you can save your plots into PDF files that are stored on your hard drive. And what's the advantage of this? Well, you can recreate your analysis. You can redo it. You can do it a million times, <laughs> really easy. You can save it, and in the future, you can modify it for another purpose or you can extend. Um, there's so many things that you can do, but this is really the first step to making nice reproducible results is making clean scripts. So you want to be neat and have separate folders for each project. And in your folder, you might want to have your, your script and your data that goes along with it and your output all bundled together so that you can easily find it again. OK, so if you want all this great party action going on, you know, the RAM writing files to your hard drive, grabbing things off of your hard drive and putting it into RAM, what R needs to know is where you're working out of from your hard drive. What I'm talking about, of course, is the working directory. So let's have a little demonstration. I'm going to fire up my R. And I'm going to try to run a script that I wrote. It's in my um, home directory under R class, and test.r is what it's called. See, it's right here. OK, and here it is opened up. And it's a pretty short little demonstration script. It's using the um, built-in data set called iris and here are the first six lines of iris and these are the names of the columns okay so what the script does is it plots makes a bivariate plot and here it is okay and so how i'm executing the commands here i'm highlighting what i want and then i'm pressing command return and it automatically sends it to the console. OK, so it generates a plot, and it prints a few things to screen. OK, and, and that's enough for now. We'll talk about more a little bit later. Uh, in the console, it'll also 
print out the summary of the data set using the summary function. Okay, so let's try sourcing it. So we'll go here and what most new users do is they will just type source, which is the function for running a script, and then type in their script name, which is test.r. And what happens? Oh, you got an error. And the first thing that new users usually think is, my computer's broken, something's wrong. Or something's wrong with me, nothing works for me. <laughs> okay, but if you just calm down and take a look at the error message, you can see it says, cannot open the connection. And then it says, warning message, cannot open file test.r, no such file or directory. Now you might be thinking, what the heck are you talking about? I know there's a file there, I wrote it myself. Well, what this is telling you is it can't find the file. And usually that's a bing bong. It's a, it's a light bulb moment to tell you that you're probably in the wrong working directory. Okay, so if you look up here in the, in the console in the corner, up here on the upper left, you see that tilde means you're at your, your home directory on your computer which is not our class, okay? So where we are is actually here, Marguerite, that's where we are. But where we thought we were was in one level down in our class. Well, we're not there, we're here. Okay, so if you come back here to your console, you can actually find out where you are by typing get working directory, get wd. Ah, and sure enough, we're in my home directory. Okay, another thing you can do is list the files on your hard drive in your home directory. And that's list files, list.files. And then if you look, sure enough, there is no test.r file. So what you need to do, so what you could do is you could source and give the path to your script, which is our class slash test dot r and when you do that shazam it worked okay so if you take a look and here here's the plot we can even do it again let's close the plot window run it again bam there it is okay it's great so um but this is not like probably the best solution. The best solution was actually to set the working directory to the correct location. So you want to use a, I can use a relative path to my directory and just tell it move to r, dot, r class. And so now if we do list files, we can see there is our source file. There it is. Okay, so now when we close up this stuff, and type source test.r, it works, yay! Okay, so back to the, to the um, a little, little bit more about scripts. So here's our script file again, and if we take a look at it, not everything that we did prints out to screen when we run in source, right? So these commands that return back to the console like typing in the name of the variable, they will not print out when you, when you source it. Okay, so although when I type SPP on the console, it, it returns the information, when I run it in, through a script, it won't. So how do you get around that? Well, you give it an explicit print command. So if you tell it print with SPP inside the function, it will print. Okay, so likewise, the summary didn't print out. So if I wanted to see the summary, I would put it inside of a print function, like so. So now if I save this, make sure you save the changes to your script and then run source again. Now it prints, see? Okay, so in order for all this great stuff to happen, you have to be in the correct working directory. Okay, so 
a few more words. So especially when you're working on a PC, be very careful. Um, for reasons that I will never understand, the default in PCs is to automatically set your working directory inside of your program files. Okay, this means that your files that you're creating are commingling with the R files that actually run the R software. That's just crazy, but this is what always happens. So don't use the default working directory. Don't, don't, don't do it. Instead, set your own working directory and put it in a place where you have all your data files, okay? You don't want things to get mixed, okay? So the R program software where your R is actually parked on your computer should be stored in a safe location. Okay, so I'll just show you on my Mac, the R program lives in a very, very different directory. Okay, where the files are is in my, on my hard drive, in the library, uh, frameworks, R framework, versions, and th this current is the pointer to version 3.0, and resources. And this, these are actually the guts of R. Okay, so you do not want your data files mixing with the guts of R. You want that to be in a very separate safe location. So um, I always make data directories on, in my, in my um, home directory. Okay, so this is where my R, R stuff is for this class and you should do the same or something similar. Okay, so I hope that helps you to learn something about the R environment, demystifies things a little bit, helps you keep things clean and keep your environment healthy. Okay, signing off, take care.